Hi guys, Derek here from Pacific Coast Auto Japan, and we're taking a look at an AE8611. This one in 1983, and so an early model, but this is probably one of the most special vehicles that we have sold or exported or had on our YouTube channel. It has something pretty amazing and a secret that's inside, and that's why I don't have the engine bay open like I typically do at the beginning of the video, because I'm going to do the big reveal halfway through to make sure that everybody <laughs> watches the video uh, more than just the introduction. Okay, that's not the real reason why, but I do want to keep that closed because this one has a surprise that was not mentioned on the auction sheet. And this happens from time to time, but only when sellers are a little bit uh, clueless about what they have and before we get into this just want to show you look the sakura are blooming do we get a focus on that maybe there we go so for this week we have the cherry blossoms here in Japan and it is really dark right now it looks like a storm is coming in and so it is unfortunate that we don't have better lighting for such a special vehicle but alas we take what we can especially when it's as busy as it is right now so let's look over the auction sheet you may get a little bit of a hint from the way that it's running. That sounds like high cams, doesn't it? Hmm, interesting. Okay, so this one is a 1984, pardon me, 84, but still an early model, Corolla 11 GTV. The GTV is the sports car version, so you get crank windows instead of power windows in it, uh, and lighter like 950 kilograms can you believe that 950 kilograms this one's like 2,000 kilograms but that one over there is 1400 and so this one this car is like uh, not half the weight of that but it sure feels like it when you drive it anyway auction grade R interior B exterior B 279 400 kilometers so a little bit on the high end but uh, that's not something I worry about and I'll tell you a little bit why later purchase from user it says air conditioning but it doesn't work why would you write that uh, engine push start very cool and I'll show you how that works uh, when we go to the interior aftermarket radiator exhaust header carburetor modification so carburetors none of the eight sixes came with carburetors ever they're all fuel injected so this person modified two carburetors which is kind of common in japan i guess i can explain why in a sec just want to go over this air cleaners have been removed kind of weird okay but uh when you see the engine bay you'll see why it's the same one like if you type in the most beautiful engine bay ever on uh, Google Images, then you'll find one that has uh, the exposed trumpets here. Pretty common, especially here in Japan. Aftermarket hood on it, and then let's go over this one here. Oh, a lot of stuff here, so let's uh, let's get to it. Interior dirty, scratched, seat wear and ripped. Left front side member and left front inner panel have been dented because of the accident. That's why it's an R grade here. Winter tires, aftermarket audio. 2016 winter tires and let's just do a little view of that because the wheels are amazing and the fitment is beautiful even though it's a winter tire okay front cross member and core support have been dented so it's been in an accident the repair shop bent it back into the proper uh, position doesn't look like the accident has caused big alignment problems but both front fenders and the hood are made out of fiberglass on this one uh, of course that's an aftermarket front fender and very cool that the aftermarket front fenders are fiberglass but they don't have any of those silly holes in the side that so many of them do have I think it looks better with them in the stock uh, copy and those fenders weren't mentioned anywhere on uh, this sheet by the seller so kind of a bonus there lightweight fenders even lighter than 950 kilograms now Okay, modified exhaust, AC doesn't work, aftermarket rear spoiler, and uh, rear interior liner is ripped, driver's seat is aftermarket, and aftermarket wheels, wheels scratch, door mirrors scratch, various scratches and dents. W on all of the panels because it's had repaint, 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 basically everywhere, and some pretty big scratches on the front and the rear bumper. Whew. Okay, so, hmm, should we go into the engine bay yet? Let's go around the car, and I have to tell you something about buying the 8.6s here from Japan. So many people love these vehicles now because they're kind of the darling of the tuner industry. They were one of the first cars to become extremely popular here in Japan for the toge racing. Famous racers like uh, 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 Tsuchiya, he 
made these cars famous basically. Initial D had an impact on it too. And uh, they're kind of classic cars now. They're over 30 years old in, in many cases. And so, wow, this one's over 30 years old. And so these cars are really hard to buy because they're really old and they don't stand up very well to abuse because they rust easily, the interior pieces go missing, and they're very commonly raced because they're a very lightweight chassis that's rear wheel drive. So either drift people or grip. And as a matter of fact, they're much more popular in Japan as grip vehicles, to my knowledge, because they're a better vehicle for grip racing than they are for drifting because short wheelbase makes them twitchy and difficult to control compared to larger vehicles like the Chaser. Now, one of the parts, uh, one of the reasons why these are difficult to buy, and I would consider these cars to be expert cars, it, like only really buyable by expert bidders. Even shops that specialize in only 8.6s, which we sell to a few of them, they're having a hard time buying these these days because prices are just insane at the moment. Take a look at this. You can have your 130 horsepower Hachiroku at more expensive than an Evo 6. Evo 6 is a 200 and, well, 300 horsepower all-wheel all drive, way faster car and in much better condition for the most part, much easier to buy, and the 8.6 costs more. And so to a lot of people, that's pretty insane. And people think, oh, I'll just get a cheap one and I'll fix it up. But that's a pretty big no-no for the 8.6 because rust can be very difficult to fix and impossible to fix properly. Give you a quick look here, late model tail light swap and uh, aftermarket rear wing. And the vehicle's pretty dirty right now, I'm so sorry. It's making me cry seeing such a cool car that's so dirty. Okay, the Levin has the exposed headlights. The Truneau has the pop-up headlights. It used to be Truneaus were more expensive, but nowadays they're the same price for the hatchback ones. Coupes are still, or coupe are still cheaper, like the notchback versions. I guess both are coupes, but for some reason in American Canada, we call the, uh, only the notchback ones the coupe. Okay, stock front bumper with stock front lip for a Japanese market. And we have yellow fog lights inside the grill here. So kind of cool. So fiberglass has some wave on it. You can see lightweight fiberglass often does. Fiberglass fenders here and almost no rust on the back. This side only has tiny little spot that's been repaired over here. And the other side has some um, uh, body repair that has been damaged and cracked a bit. But compared to the average 8.6, uh, not so bad at all. Okay, we will go look at the engine now. And man, I got a lot of things to talk about with the engine. So quick view of the interior. We'll come back a little bit later. Pop this up. Open the hood, and I'm going to give you guys a second to figure out what it is. Okay, now keep in mind, they didn't say much about the uh, state of modification of the car. And so, we already knew about the exhaust header, that's nice. And we already knew about the carbs, but we didn't know that they are quad single carbs kind of a weird combination. Usually they're dual side draft. And so you get two carburetors and then uh, one barrel for each cylinder. Here we have four carburetors, one barrel for each cylinder. They look really big just going off of the side of them. They look like they're 44. And so plenty of carbur car carburation. I don't even know if that's a real word. Uh, dipstick has been converted to like a different model Toyota dipstick. That's fun. Aluminum radiator. And so what's the big surprise? Well, if you haven't got it by now, here it is. This isn't the standard AE86 engine. The standard one in this car is called the Blue Top and it has silver valve covers and it's a different engine. This one is either the silver top or the black top and I'm going to call this a black top, but I don't know 100%. The reason why I'm gonna call it that is because valve covers here are the shape of the black top valve covers, although they are changeable. Note that the blue top valve covers cannot be put on. So if this were an actual blue top, you can't put these valve covers on. Now the real reason you can tell that this is not the blue top is that you have individual coil packs here. 
but all AE86 engines, all A-series engines, 4 AG engines, came with distributors. This one has a distributor that's been removed. Down in here is where the distributor goes, and the blacktop engine was only available in front-wheel drive cars, and so that wasn't ever a problem to have the distributor stick off the edge of the vehicle. But if you swap it into this car, unfortunately there's a firewall there, but I guess fortunately the firewall will help if your car ever burns down, but the blue top one that usually came here, the distributor is right here. And so, really, really weird, and I can't understand why they would do this. So take a look. Carburetors. Let's talk about them for a sec. Why do people put carburetors on the 8.6 engine? Well, there is a lot of debate about this, and it requires a little bit more explanation than I'm going to get into in this video. But basically, carburetors are easier to get their max power out of if you don't have the facilities of a tuning shop and you don't have a dyno. And a lot of people who drove these cars, especially in the past, in Japan, they didn't have a lot of shops that you could go and do computer tuning like that. And so these people would buy the 8.6s, they wouldn't have a lot of money, and they would swap on carburetors from like a bike or... Uh, actually, most of the time they were bike carburetors and then get rid of your computer completely and get rid of 15 kilograms of extra goods that are needed for a fuel injection system and just run carburetors and you can get really good power out of a carburetor pretty easily by just jetting them to whatever size uh, jets that you want. What's weird about this one is you still have a computer because if you take the distributor away you need to run a computer to tell the coil packs when to fire and so this is the meme of Jackie Chan's head exploding. Why would you put on the carburetors and run a computer system? Very, very strange. Not that this is a bad thing. I love the idea of doing weird things to cars just because other people have not done them. And I think that this car is amazing and it is amazingly fast. But because it's a carbureted engine, it's only amazingly fast at your top 1,000 RPM. And so if you keep driving it around at 8,000 RPM, this car is a screamer. And probably somewhere around 200 horsepower right at the very peak. If it were fuel injected, the car would be faster because you can set your proper fuel ratios for any RPM, whereas a carburetor, you're really limited in where you get your power. So on a racetrack, this would be competitive and a lot of racing 8.6s still use carburetors to this day. Uh, outside of a racetrack, you have to put up with bad torque at the lower end. Okay, the Blacktop AE111 engine is variable valve timing. It has lightweight internals, and the stock engine, I think, revs up to 8,200 RPM. Stock, they come with individual throttle bodies like this, but it is a fuel injection system, and unfortunately, on the stock Blacktop, they have a cover that covers up your individual throttle bodies, but the sound and the response you get from carbureted system is like nothing else. And we're going to see if the police come in about 15 minutes because, yeah, that's very, very loud, especially with no air filters on there. Okay, uh, brake stopper here, common for racing cars, and uh, nothing for the temperature gauge, kind of weird. All right, what an engine, my gosh. Okay, going to close the hood, and we'll go over to the interior, and wow, that's really noisy. All right, so inside here, we have the red and black interior. This interior was available only on the early models, and it's my favorite interior of all of the 8.6s because it holds up to damage way better than any of the other interiors. Well, the blue one of the same material is the same, but the later model ones, they tried to upgrade uh, the quality of the interior with soft touch materials, and it turned out that it was a bad decision because they don't hold up well over time. We have aftermarket Recaro seat here. Sagginess here. Okay, lots of room to get into the back. These cars have so much space in them and are so useful in terms of utility. Some rips in the back here, but compared to your average one, way less. And unfortunately, some douchebag, uh, I mean, some not nice guy put some speaker holes into the stock board. Those boards can be really hard to find. These rear ones, they don't deform with this trim level. And so that's extra good. And look at this seat belts back when uh, you didn't need a shoulder strap. 
reminds me of my childhood. And look, they don't they don't even retract. Weird. Okay, aftermarket steering wheel. Very nice position for the steering wheel and take a look at this. The computer diagnostics comes through this little computer. It has buttons, but I don't know what they do. Now, to start the engine, this is a weird one. All right, so here's the key. Obviously, it's not in because it's push start. So I'm going to stop the engine by press that. And so we have an engine key, but there's nowhere to put that anymore. And there's a little blue chip here. And so the little blue chip, you have to touch right where the tape is. And I guess this could be like a security feature because if you took the tape off, nobody would know how to start this engine. So what you have to do is you press the brakes. You put this on and it beeps twice. Okay. And then you push the start button. There you go. This is a power steering model. I think the GTV didn't come with power steering originally, originally so it's been swapped. 279, 487 kilometers on there. Cracking the dashboard here and here. Bunch of things added to it. 86 Festival in Okayama. Also the front said Motegi, so that's another circuit or a famous one here in Japan. The fan doesn't work at all. Boo, 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 boo. But this panel is in better shape than most of them are. Analog gauges. You could also get a digital gauge with like LEDs here. For some reason, the analog one is more popular. And look at this, only the early models have this. After 100,000 kilometers, it's yellow here. So it's like, you better be careful driving that fast. Crank windows for your 8.6 pleasure. The Japanese models could also come with power windows, but crank windows feel good because the ones that we used to drive, my wife and I, they were crank windows. Shifting is good, but second gear is a little bit weak. It popped out on me twice while driving it. If you put it right in there securely, it won't pop out, but it's a little bit weak on that second gear. Brakes feel great. They feel like aftermarket. Clutch is aftermarket, but easy to use. And uh, lots of brum brum. Unfortunately, it only has a tiny little number there for your RPM. And because it is a full computer, you can set whatever RPM that you want on there. Um, it idles at 1200 probably it has had uh, well maybe not probably it might have had camshafts replaced uh, to higher lift ones it revs sort of like it does ashtray has been removed floor mats are nice this seat is in great condition other than a little bit of what looks like mold there but these seats rip like crazy in this section here not ripped very cool ooh lug nuts Ooh, bike key. All right, let's go take a look at the back. Pop the trunk. The trunk is the actual trunk, not a fiberglass one. Hard to find good trunks because they rust like crazy. And look at this. No rust up in here. No rust across there. No rust down here. We got so lucky with this car. And I'm not gonna say how much it costs because we don't do that according to our policy. We got this for literally less than half of what this car is worth. I'm not even joking about that. No speakers in the back. This is where the speakers usually go in the GT3. 